Welcome to my channel and this is the first lecture for basic concepts of electrical engineering. So first we can think about atom and its particles. Atom is nothing but the building block of matter and it consists of mainly three things proton, electron and neutron. Nucleus is the center of atom and it consists of proton and neutron. So first we can think about proton. Proton is the positively charged particle. Its charge is plus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. And proton is discovered by Ernest Rutherford. The next component that is electron. It is negatively charged particle and its charge is minus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. And the last part that is neutron, it is chargeless particle. Nucleus consists of this neutron and proton. In this diagram, clearly you can see that this is the center of an atom that is nucleus. <clears throat> this nucleus consists of proton and neutron. Electrons are the components which are the revolving components around the atom. They are loosely packed in an atom. So they can freely move. So these are the major three components involved in an atom. Electron is the moving particle. So we should remember this point. Okay. Next, what are the basic terms <coughs> involved in this concept? That is, first is current, voltage, resistance and electrical power. And we will discuss about these three, these things detail in this video. First is current. Current is nothing but electrical current is the rate of flow of electric charge within a particular time in an electric circuit. Okay. The charge can be protons, electrons or ions. Already we discussed that in an atom there will be protons electrons and protons are the positively charged particles electrons are the negatively charged particles movements of either of these things will lead to the flow of electrical current and that is the definition for electrical current normally electrons are the major moving particles in an atom so we can say that the moment of electron is nothing but current based on this we can write one formula that is i is equal to q by t and here i is the current in ampere and q is the charge transferred and its unit is coulomb and t is the time its unit is in second so we can say that the un the unit of current is charge per second q by t so charge per second or its si unit is ampere so we can define ampere it is one coulomb of charge moving at a point in one second that is the definition for ampere we can simply define current voltage resistance by comparing these three things with the flow of current through a pipe if we compare the flow of water with current when current is flowing through a pure conductor we know that pure conductors or metals are the conductors of electricity they can conduct or carry electrons or charge carriers so we can compare the flow of current through a conductor with the flow of water through a pipe here water is current we can compare that and here you can see what water is moving from this upper region to this lower region okay that means 
current is moving from a higher potential to a lower potential or if there is a potential difference water at this region is lower than that of this region so water will move from one point to another point if there is a potential difference and that potential difference is voltage and from this diagram we can define current sorry resistance the area of this region is higher than that of this region so water can easily flow through this region and it is sometimes difficult when the water enter to this point or this region so it will face some difficulties and that difficulty to the flow of water through this pipe we can compare it as resistance in electrical circuit okay so in electrical circuit we can compare current with the water and potential difference or if the if we need to flow the water through a pipe first we should apply a pressure on it and that pressure or potential difference can compare with the voltage and the difficulties that the water faces when it flows through a pipe can be the resistance of the resistance in electrical medium so we will discuss about them in detail here so uh, there will be two currents that is electrical current and conventional current flow so electrical current is due to the flow of electrons from negative terminal to the positive terminal and conventional current flow is due to the flow of positive charge or holes from the positive terminal to the negative terminal to understand these concepts you can use these diagrams here this figure shows the electron flow when a conductor is connected through a battery when the battery get charged then what will happen the electrons will move from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal through this conducting medium okay and such a type of flow of electrons in an electrical circuit can simply defined as current okay so electrical current is nothing but the flow of electrons from positive terminal to the neg negative terminal to the positive terminal through a conducting medium and conventional current flow is the flow of positively charged or holes from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal through this conductor this will happens only when the battery is charged otherwise they will not move okay this is the difference between electric and conventional current next we will discuss about voltage voltage is also known as electric potential difference electromotive force or emf and electrical pressure or electric tension these are the terms which represents voltage so we can say that it is the difference in electrical potential between two points okay difference in electrical potential between two points for that we can think about this diagram here it is a point having potential a and this is a point having potential b so the potential across this battery or the potential difference between these two points will be vab that is electrical potential or potential difference or simply vab is equal to a minus b and that is the potential that will appear across this battery that is voltage or otherwise we can define voltage is defined as the work needed per unit charge to move a test charge between two points okay and based on this we can return as write as v is equal to w by q and w is the work done in joules and q is the charge in coulomb 
based on these things we can write the unit of voltage that is work done by charge so unit of work done is joule charge of unit of charge is coulomb so joule per coulomb is the unit of voltage or volt or in SI unit we can say that unit of voltage is volt next concept that is resistance resistance is the thing when the electrical current flows through a conductor the conductor offers some obstruction to the flow of current and it this obstruction is known as electrical resistance which is denoted by the capital letter R its unit is ohm if we consider a conductor having length L in meters and if the area of the conductor is A in meter square then we can write resistance R is directly proportional to length divided by area or the resistance R is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and which is inversely proportional to the area of the area of cross section of the conductor so we can return as R is equal to rho into L by A rho is the proportionality and that is the resistivity of the material or specific resistance its unit is ohm meter resistivity from this equation we can write resistivity rho is equal to r a divided by l from there we will get the unit of resistivity that is ohm meter so resistance is the obstruction to the flow of current through a conductor next important point is electrical power that is the rate at which work is done or energy is transformed into an electrical circuit okay simply it is a measure of how much energy is used in a span of time and based on this we can write the equation for power energy that is p is equal to e divided by t and here p is the electrical power and e is the energy consumption in joule unit of energy is joule and t is the time in second it is the work or energy required to move electrical power or electrons from one point to another energy is transferred for that so p is equal to e divided by t and based on this p is equal to e by t we can write the unit of power p is equal to joules per second joule is the unit of electrical energy and second is the unit for time so joule per second or simply we can write the unit of electrical power is watt in electrical power there will be many more equations and based on voltage and current we can write electrical power p is equal to the product of voltage into current or we can write p is equal to i square into r or simply we can write p is equal to v square by r we will get these two equations from ohm's law we know that ohm's law is the relationship between resistance of a conductor current and voltage flowing through that conductor and based on ohm's law we can write v is equal to i into r and from here i is equal to v by r or v is equal to i r and by using that equations with the position of this voltage and current we can define an equation for voltage and current from ohm's law and that can be right here and we will get these two equations here p is the electrical power in watt and v is the voltage in volt and i is the current in ampere and these are the major portions thanks for watching my video for more videos please subscribe and share like my channel okay thank you